pretty hard to move cameras around up here so I wanted to give you one wide shot before I dug in with the uh, GoPro and showed you detailed shots but uh, the basic configuration is this this is my refrigerator vent you've seen me take the refrigerator out inside the RV and um, there's a, a wall on both sides and a screen on the top of the sort of inner uh, inner uh, vent there so first I'm going to take this fin off then I'm going to drill through the back and that's where I'm going to run the cable in terms of mounting the actual antenna, the benefit of the antenna is you want it up as high as possible. So in this case, I, I do want to mount it with the uh, full extension, which will get it well above my air conditioner here, and that'll be really great. So um, several factors here. I want to preserve room for the solar panels. I want to make sure that I'm not shading any solar panels, even if I put this thing up very high. And I want to make sure that if it lays down because I hit something with it, it doesn't hit anything else. It can lay down all the way on its spring. So all that criteria matches this space. And as an added benefit, it's a short wire run to the refrigerator vent here. Um, using this CB mount, uh, CB antenna mount, the, the threads happen to match. I found this on Amazon for $14. And you can see that that makes a, a really nice spot for it. Since this CB antenna mount has magnets on the bottom, I don't really need the magnets. I'm not going to use the magnets because my Airstream is not magnetic uh, because it's made out of aluminum. But um, I'm going to use VHB tape all along the bottom here just to stick it to the roof, which I'll clean thoroughly with alcohol. Um, and uh, just because it is a little heavy, heavy enough to deform the aluminum on the roof, I'm going to put it over this rivet line here. So that's going to go right there, stuck to the roof. Antenna is going to go on top. And then a wire is going to come from here down around where this fin is through the back of the vent and down into the main body of the trailer. One other little pro tip here. I just brought this little plastic bin up onto the roof. Uh, it's hard to stay organized with tools and things and um, uh, keeps things from rolling off the roof and uh, you know small parts and things I can throw in there is a nice little addition. Okay so the first step here is I got to remove this fin right here and that involves taking the uh, sealant off and then drilling out the three rivets. Uh, the good news is that the fin is attached really poorly, so I kind of wanted to take it off and fix it anyway. So uh, two for one on this one. That sealant is uh, not in great shape. That came off a little easier than I would like it to have come off. Um, so again, pretty happy that I'm going to be able to fix that. Um, what I'm finding here now, too, is that these are screws. They're not, uh, they're not rivets, so I'm just going to use a screwdriver to unscrew those. That screw came out all too easily, which indicates to me that this might be a leak spot. And I'm just gently working it back and forth. So I'm going to have to scrape this off uh, before I reinstall the um, fin, but uh, it's not going to prevent me from uh, doing my, my repair here. So, so what I want to do here is I want to drill through right there. You can see this is a pipe that comes up. My fingers are, are poking over the top of the pipe and there's a screen on there. It's actually easier to drill through here than it is to go through the screen or reattach it. And if I were to go through the screen, um, it would create some open spots, whereas here I can use a nice tight cable gland. So at the risk of too much information here, what I want to do is I want to drill a hole and then use this thing to uh, pass the wire through the hole. It's hollow and it has a nice little O-ring seal there. And what you do is you, uh, you drill a hole and push this through the hole. And on the other side of the hole, you tighten this nut, right? So the wall of the camper is right there and there's a little rubber O-ring there. Then you pass the wire through, right? And right here, there's another rubber gasket that tightens around the wire when you tighten down this nut, right? So this whole thing is called a cable gland and you have to find the one that fits your wire. To use it, I have to drill a bigger hole than I, uh, than I would drill if I was just using the wire. But I think I'm going to do that because this really does form a nice watertight seal. It provides strain relief for the wire and it prevents the wire from rubbing on the edges of the hole as it goes through. So 
This is going to work better than any sort of like just hole with a piece of caulk or something like that or a piece of tape um, to smooth it. These are cheap. You can find them on Amazon in big collections for like 10 bucks or you can order them individually. Um, I think the best source for them is this company McMaster Car. McMaster.com is where you find them. So um, I had to find a drill bit that fit this hole and uh, none of my regular drill bits were big enough but I did find a little hole saw that was just right. So this is a Bosch hole saw that I keep. You can see it is a three quarter inch hole saw and um, that's what I'm going to use to drill the hole. And then I'm going to put the gland in and I'll be good to go. So I'm doing this a little blind. I want to be up off the bottom so if water runs down here it doesn't go into the hole and I need sufficient room to uh, put the cable gland in there. So I'm going to go like right there, right? Um, if I was smart, right, I can take my phone, set it on selfie mode and tip the camera right in there and see. Okay, I think I'm going to go up a little bit based on, based on what I'm seeing with my camera. Okay, there we go. Nice clean hole there. It's actually very clean, uh, probably because that hole saw was pretty new. And now I just have to attach the cable gland. So I'm going to take this end and shove it through that hole up here. It's good to do before you have to go inside. Right? And now I'm going to have to have somebody screw that, screw this ring on from the inside. Ideally, while well, I hold this on from the outside. Well, I've pushed the refrigerator out of the way a little bit. And I don't know whether it comes as good news or bad news, but actually I am skinny enough to fit in this refrigerator. And I am not a small guy. So you can see here, there is the hole, there is the cable gland that I've pushed through. And you can see that this is the configuration of the top of the refrigerator. All I have to do is screw on that little piece. Just trying to catch those threads without pushing it back out. And uh, that worked way better than I thought it would. So there you go. Cable gland is installed. Take that. Look good Pretty easy. Straightforward. I like it. So this is the gasket here that goes back in there. Got caught on exit, but once it's once it's secured in there, it's no problem to keep it in there. It's supposed to be tight. So there you go. So first I'm going to hit this with a little degreaser. I already uh, cleaned it off with water, but uh, pretty much everyone always says start with degreaser. And uh, I've never found anything wrong with that advice, even though I'm not sure I understand it completely. Next thing I'm going to do is actually use a little ethanol, okay? Um, I keep some in my shop for various projects, but uh, I don't know, it just feels a little better than using mineral spirits up here. And um, I don't really have any isopropyl alcohol in a uh, canister, so I think that works pretty well. This is now the cleanest spot on the roof of my RV, and I can think about attaching this antenna right there using sticky tape. Okay, so um, I'm using 3M VHB tape, and uh, this is the same stuff I use to attach my solar panels. Possible. Probably this would have been wiser to do before I got on the roof. So there's a pro tip there. Do this before you get on the roof. So there we go. The tape is on there, and I am literally just going to stick it to the roof. Um, this takes a full um, 48 hours or more to cure completely. But already it's too, if I, if I move this, I'm moving the whole trailer, um, you know, even with that initial stick. So if you're 
in the in the group of people who doesn't really believe in the strength of this product, um, I urge you to try it out uh, on a clean, dry surface. It is really shockingly powerful bond. So next up here is I'm going to put some Loctite on these threads and thread on the antenna itself. So I'm going to start one piece at a time, you know, just with the spring piece here. And I'm just going to put a little Loctite on the threads. And uh, let's just tighten those down here. So I put that blue Loctite on the threads. But threads really do need to stretch a little bit. That's how they hold their, their shape. So next here, I'm gonna put this extension on. And again, I'm just gonna screw that on top of this. This is the hole where the wire itself will come out, right, the antenna wire. So again, I'm gonna start with some Loctite. but not least, we have the antenna itself. And I'm gonna to need to feed the uh, string of the antenna down here and get it out of the bottom. So you can see that there's the antenna coming out of the bottom of that tube. And same drill here again. The Loctite on the threads. Cap on. And this one screws on a little harder just because I have to spin that, that, uh, this thing as I'm spinning that thing. There you go. We have the antenna here. It bends when it gets hit. The base is nice and steady. See how uh, solid that is already um, and when it gets hit. We have this wire coming up out of the vent here, ready to attach to this wire, right? Now I'm gonna to wanna to create some sort of extra slack here and I'll do that with plastic ties. But one thing I really wanna make sure I don't forget to do before I hook these together is I wanna put the other end of that cable gland on and pull that through. So I'll make sure that washer is seated in there. I'll screw that cable gland on. So the other thing I need to remember is I got to come around the fin that's going to be here. So this fin is going to come back here, and I don't need—I don't want too sharp a turn here. I don't want it to rub against this. I'll probably put some um, electrical tape or something on there to prevent that from rubbing. But uh, in the meantime, what I need to do is actually pull out a little bit more of this wire. So I'm going to loosen up this cable gland a little bit, pull out a little more wire. Now I can make that bend without any trouble. And I have a little extra there for like a uh, room to work, right? So um, so that looks pretty good. And now I'll tighten that cable gland down again. Okay, that's nice and nice and tight. Um, you know, you can use your fingers on this. You don't really need to put a wrench on it. Um, maybe check it every couple years. But now here, I will make the connection here. So that's really it for this um, install of the antenna on the roof and the, um, the wire down into the refrigerator vent. I'm gonna have to come back and seal all of this caulk, right? I'm gonna get that little leftover hole that I, I, I have on this antenna because it came with a wire that I took off. Uh, I gotta put these down with wire ties, right? So that they, um, they stay secure. And I have to replace the fin here. Um, so there's a little bit of cleanup work here that I have to do. I have to lay some tape down here. And, and of course, I'll caulk that as well. So. Um, again and I'm going to use that same VHB tape to attach it all the way down. So this is actually better than how it was adhered the first time with just a section of tape.
And the real trick here is I need to get it positioned properly before I put the screws in. And uh, one thing, if you'll remember, is that this ugly side was out. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one screw right in the middle as my reference point. Okay, everybody see that? And then I'm going to peel this tape. There's that screw. Okay, so it's a little hot out here, but um, you can see here the whole installation is done. We've got the CB antenna mount that I adapted uh, here, and it's holding the antenna. There's Loctite here, and there's Loctite here, and the antenna goes all the way up. Right? Wire comes out of the back of the antenna here and just loops around where this connection is made. I'm using a cable tie to just keep this on the roof and, and, uh, and do a little strain relief here um, and to keep it away from this fin. Um, this, uh, this seems to work pretty well. I might put a little tape here or something like that in case it, it jams into this fin, but it actually looks like it's, it's just in no danger of doing that and I'd rather not put a piece of tape there. Uh, and then of course it goes, it goes in here to this cable gland. The fin has been reinstalled with new VHB tape underneath and I put these screws in. And take a moment to recognize we put no holes in the roof, none at all. No screw holes to mount it and no drill hole to uh, drive the, drive the uh, cable into the interior of the trailer, which is really nice. Okay, so the next step here is some Sikaflex 221. This is the stuff I use to seal up um, any holes on the RV, any gaps, any seals. And um, I did not create any holes in my installation, but I do want to reseal that area around the fin where I took the fin off above the refrigerator vent. So this stuff just goes in a standard caulking gun. Aha! And uh, we'll apply it right now. Okay, I'm just going to seal along this seam and I'm also going to seal on top of each of these screws. And uh, this is just like sort of any other caulking operation with the exception of the fact that I'm up on the roof and it's sort of hard to get a good angle. So I'm going to do one side at a time here. You remember that this part wasn't actually sealed with caulk originally. So I'm sort of kicking it up a notch here by uh, adding this sealer on. Uh, water does not work very well for smoothing this out, but mineral spirits do. They prevent it from sticking to your finger. And that way you can push this down into the gap and really smooth out this bead. Um, I used to think of smoothing this as a purely cosmetic step, but really the smoothing um, prevents it from catching dirt and things. So it really does help in terms of maintaining your trailer to uh, smooth it out. Now we're gonna fill that hole, but also I'm gonna go around the outside here. And that serves a couple purposes. One is it helps to bond it to the roof and more roof bonding is better than less roof bonding. But also it prevents water from getting into the VHB tape that I use to hold this down. And um, you know, that tape is very strong, but it's not really weather resistant. So you have to protect it in some way.
So this whole process took me about two hours total and I was filming it. So for you, uh, it might take you a little less. So here's a little view of what it looks like from the outside. You can see the antenna is right there. Um, does it look a little strange? Sure. But such is the price of connectivity. Um, I don't know. I'm happy with it. It's off to the side a little bit, but uh, not the end of the world. And as I said, that's the best place for me to put it on my trailer.